um, but it looks good. It looks good. It looks like all we have to do now is sift. And I'm going to, uh, I think, start that process. And I'm not going to make you sit and watch me sift the whole thing. I'll show you a little bit how I do it um, and what's easiest for me uh, while I probably just chitter chatter on about worms. Uh, but um, yeah, let, let's move this guy out of the way. Let's get that bin out. Um, we're just going to move him to this side of the camera, I think. We're going to get our sifting bin, which is a big 18 gallon tote. Uh, this is my sifting pan, which is actually a sweater drawer out of an Alcott closet organizer, which was weird because I'd gone to Office Depot and I've got some of those smaller bins that have this metal meshy stuff. I've tried making my own sifters. I've gone through it all. And I was looking online one day and I saw one of these. Now, the closet set's like $2,200, the closet organizer that comes with drawers and whatnot. But these drawers themselves, this exact size and everything, is $8. However, I couldn't figure out how to order just the bin without ordering uh, the, whole, the whole closet organizer, which wasn't going to happen. And within three days of that, I happened to be taking my garbage out. I live in an apartment, so I'm in a complex. Uh, and lo and behold, there was a perfectly brand new, clear 18 gallon bin. Not this one, it's, it's a different one. I have my car. Um, and this tray. In fact, there were two of these. There were two of those. What do you think of that? That's pretty awesome, huh? So um, my gloves on just because um, the rubber gloves, you know, they'll get tore. I'm gonna tape my thumb up because I rub my thumb a lot while I'm great uh, sifting on the bottom and it gets my thumb knuckle pretty raw. So we're gonna tape that up. And just so you know, the whole reason why I am actually wearing blue rubber gloves, there's a lot of reasons. Um, one, I already kind of sort of talked about the fact that worms have mucous membrane bodies. I have oil on my hands. I have detritus. Even if I washed my hands, there's soap. Um, you, you hear what I'm saying? There, there's stuff that I could get on them. But more than that, there is nothing more disgusting than sticking your hand into your worm bin and feeling your fingernails cut worms in half. It's horrible. And what's even worse, worse, worse than that is when you're digging around in your bin later and you see a little fraction of a worm who used to be whole and you know you cut him in half, but he's still just cruising around in your bin. It's pretty wild. So... It's a pretty gentle process that I go through. It's one reason why I have this bucket sitting up here. Um, this extra little thing here was just so you guys could see some of the worms kind of cruising around in there. But we're going to actually toss them in our bigger bin. Because if we look over here real quick, I've actually already cleaned out um, one of my bins. So these are the extra guys. Sorry, my lighting is probably terrible that um, they've been waiting for me to finish these other two bins so they could all be put into brand new fresh bedding all together. So got some wood chips on top. We'll let them get in there and boogie around. So whichever ones I find will be getting tossed in there. So I'm going to start here with a little bit. We just get some handfuls of our nice loamy earth. And the thing is, this stuff is really fine. It's really, really fine. It's really fine. It goes through no problem, but you can kind of see how many worms I've got in there. Now, when you see me pushing, I'm not actually pushing through. I've got a little bit of pressure, but what I'm actually doing is I'm rolling it. I'm rolling it and allowing it to fall through so I can roll the dirt off my worms and see them a little better for retrieval. Now, they are escape artists, and if you give them an opportunity, they absolutely will take off on you. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, that's okay. If they fall through into my compost, big ones you can retrieve, little ones you can't really do anything about, uh, 
but you know they're just part of the ecosystem at that point either they're going to continue to feed and thrive in there and when you go dig your castings out later you're going to have some worms going hey what's up or they're going to die and wither and become part of the compost and you kind of see how i'm cleaning them off a little bit here that's just basically what i do roll them around get them exposed keep them a little disoriented so they don't find those holes that they're being rolled around on and try to make an escape this is absolutely not my favorite way to do this uh absolutely not the worm or sorry the banana method is my favorite um and just because i end up retrieving and saving a whole lot more worms um but they will all become part of the ecosystem on the outside. You can see how they're kind of getting cleaned up there. Now, when you're picking them out, I'm going to pick some out here, toss them in my bin. Um, it's okay if you bring a little bit of your old uh, worm castings into your fresh bedding. And that's, that's like with any living thing. It likes familiar surroundings. So if you put it in a bed of totally brand new stuff, is it going to do its thing? Yes, of course it is. However, if you want to speed that process up and just make it a little more comfortable for the critter, toss some of his stuff back in there with it. That way he knows this is my earth, this is my bin, this is my bucket, this is where I live, and this is where I'm going to do my job. But you can see how many I'm getting out of here. So, I am going to stop the video here. Um, and going to I think cut into I'm going to get some of the more of this done and I'm going to get ready to set up a new bin with um, some fresh bedding look at that beautiful beautiful now something just real quick something else you should probably know about worms is they are self-regulating meaning that they will uh, keep their colony at a healthy size to where everybody has enough space and everybody has enough food. So if you go long periods of time without actually providing your worms with some nutrition, um, then yeah, they're gonna die off and they're gonna leave and or try to anyway. Uh, and that's just how it is because like I said, they're driven by food, not by anything else, food. Um, so we're going to move this over to the side a little bit so you can take a good look here at our, look at that, look at that, beautiful, perfectly sifted and it smells so rich, it smells like the forest floor, that is, I couldn't get any more perfect. Perfect.